it goes without saying that the world in a Zelda game has tons of stuff to interact with. With A Link to the Past, for example, you can walk up to stuff, press the A button, and you'll be able to talk to people, open chests, or pull on switches. We're going to get this mechanic implemented into our game. We'll take into account the direction that Link is facing, and check only in front of him to see if anything interesting is there, like a chest or a button. The first thing we'll need in order to get this working is, of course, something to interact with. We'll keep it simple for now. I'm just going to create a new collider and we'll pretend it's some kind of button that Link can walk up to and press. Now, one really cool aspect about colliders is that you can assign each one their own collider class. This allows us to differentiate what each collider actually represents. Is it a wall? Is it the player? An enemy? From now on in this game, we're going to assign each collider a class. For instance, I'm going to create a collision class for the player and assign it to his collider. In addition to this, I'm going to create a class for the button and assign it to that collider. With that all set up, we can work on getting Link to press this button. This will involve querying the world. Basically, what querying means is we will specify an area in our game world and ask, is there a collider here? Specifically, we'll be asking, is there a collider with the button collider class here? And if there is, then that means that we will press it. We're going to do this query whenever the spacebar is pressed. We'll look at the player's position and do our query in a big 80 pixel radius circle right around him. Here, we're specifying that we're querying for button colliders, and after this query runs, it'll give us a table full of every collider that we found. If the query didn't find any button colliders, then this table will be empty. But, if this collider's table isn't empty, that means we've successfully queried the world and found a button. To make use of this, we can say if the number of colliders we found is greater than zero, then we'll do something. To demonstrate this, I'll just increase a score variable to show how this works. So, running the game with query drawing enabled, whenever we press the spacebar, we can see our query. It's a big circle right around Link. Each time we make one of these, we're checking to see if there's any buttons in that perimeter. If we walk down to the button collider and query around that, we'll see that our score variable increases. The query works. But it's a little weird having this check be all around Link. In the games, Link needs to be facing whatever he wants to interact with. He can't have his back to a person and try and talk with them. We need to adjust our query so it's just the space in front of Link. To start this process, we're going to keep track of what direction Link is facing by storing a new dir property. Whenever we press any of the direction keys, we're also going to update this dir property to store this direction. That way, we always will know which way Link is facing. This is important because if, say, Link was facing left, we'll need to do our query to the left of Link. To put the query circle in the right place, we're going to grab the player's current position and then check player.dir to adjust that position. We're not changing the player's position here, we're changing where the query is. If the dir value is right, we'll want to move the x position of this query circle over to the right by about 60 pixels. If it's up, we'll move the y position up. Same idea for the other directions. Then we just do the query as before, but this time I'll make the circle a bit smaller. And that'll do it. Link will now inspect only the small area in front of him. Now when we walk up to the button, we can only press it if Link is facing it. Of course, we won't actually be showing these queries to the player, so we'll keep it invisible in the end. This interaction mechanic will come in handy a lot over the course of developing this game. We'll actually be using it right away in the next video. If you haven't already, be sure to check out this project on GitHub. You can find all the information you need in the description. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm having a lot of fun making these, and I've been getting a lot of great feedback from you all. If you have suggestions on how I can improve the presentation of this stuff, please let me know. Also, if you like the content here, be sure to subscribe. I'd greatly appreciate the support.